Hey there, good evening 4-H photographers. This is your 4-H leader. Took some pictures this morning down there at the La Jolla Cove and I'm um, going to just do a quick editing session, show you what I'm thinking, show you what you guys could be thinking about when you're editing your pictures. So let's switch over to Lightroom. So as you know, Lightroom is my editing program and uh, first thing I do is I bring the cam all the pictures in off my camera no matter how bad they are and then we go through and we start what we call calling the pictures which is picking the good ones picking the bad ones and the good ones i give a flag to up here the bad ones i give an x to and i do that using x on my keyboard and p on my keyboard p for flag x for bad and what we do is we want to look at i took you know basically five pictures of the same thing here and we want to look through these five pictures and we want to pick the best one, the one we like. And um, what's really changing in these pictures is what that bird is doing plus what the wave is doing in the background. So I'm looking at this bird and I'm looking at the wave. And that one looks the most interesting to me, so I'm going to pick it and unpick that one. And that's the one I'm going to edit, and the rest I'm not going to edit. So well, let's just go ahead and edit this. I hit my D for develop, and again, I'm going to start here at the right, and I'm going to generally work from top to bottom. So first thing I'm going to do is crop this. You can see that it's just got a little too much stuff in it. I'm going to look over here. Yeah, it's still got too much stuff. What do you think? Tighten it up? Yeah, we don't want to lose our bird over there. You got to look at the edges. You don't, don't want to leave stuff laying around that you really don't want in the picture. Let's go with that for now. And then I'm going to come down here. I'm going to hit automatic on my white balance. I'm going to hit automatic on my exposure. And I'm going to look at that and I'm going to say, well, that's just too bright for me. I really didn't look that bright when I was out there. So I'm going to bring the exposure down just a little bit. Then I'm going to check the whites and see if there's whites. Remember, I hold down my Alt key when I click on this and, and I can see what's white. See if I do that, everything is white. If I do that, you know, the whites turn to gray. So I'm going to bring it down so there's just a little bit of whites. I'm going to do the same for blacks. Those are black blobs. We don't want black blobs. We want gray blobs. So we get rid of the black blobs. And I'm going to look at clarity just a little bit. And see what clarity does. It goes from blurry to really grainy. Um, and all I want to do is I want to bring out... A little detail in the foreground here. I want to bring out detail in the bird and stuff. And finally, Vibrance um, highlights the blues, and that's useful for our sky. What I want to do here is I want to bring this water in. You can see that water is kind of flat. I'm going to bring it in a little bit. The brown's going to come up. Cool. And the uh, last thing I'm going to do is bring in a little dark in the corners a little bit. Uh, but I, I want to concentrate my eyes on this bird down here, and I'm still not doing that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick what's called a radial gradient. And I'm going to pick the exposure version of it. And what this does is this puts a spot that I can put on there. And that spot is, you know, I can change. And I can either do the spot or I can leave the spot and change everything around it, which is what I really want to do. Because what I want to do is I want to, I want to bring your eye to the bird. So I'm going to darken everything a little bit with the bird, but not, not make it weird. If I do this, yeah, yeah, you can see the bird. That's just kind of weird. Okay, so we want to make it so that your eye is drawn to the bird in a subtle way. Not 
not real obvious. So let's try that. All right. So there it is. There's my edit. And I'm going to stick with that for now. OK. You know, the reason I say stick with that for now is I, I often come back to these and look at them and say, you know, that's uh, needs a little work. You know, it's sometimes it's best to let these things rest. All right. I'm going to ignore that guy, and we're going to look at these two. And what I'm going to do is do comparison mode down here, and I'm going to look at these two, see which one I like the best. Really, they're the same, but um, I like the horizon on this left one better. I like it lower down. So we're going to pick that one, and we're going to develop it. OK, again, going into the crop module. And notice this horizon is not horizontal. So I'm going to rotate this a little bit to make that horizon horizontal. And that's good enough. I'm going to do an automatic white balance. I'm going to do an automatic exposure, which actually looks pretty good. I'm going to check uh, the whites. And that's pretty good. That sun is never going to go away because it's it's the sun. It's blown out. And I bring the blacks down just a bit. Okay. And see this yellow? I really like this yellow. I'm going to bring the white balance up just a little bit. I'm going to so that's going to make things more yellow. It's more of a morning picture. And I'm going to actually check the clarity, but what I'm going to do instead of making it more grainy, I'm going to make it softer, ever so slightly. And then I'm going to bring in some vibrance to make that even more, the yellow stand out even more, the blue stand out. Uh, now we're going to come down here to what's called hue, saturation, and lightness. And what I can do is I can individually pick colors and change them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick luminance, which is how light or dark the color is. And I'm going to pick the blue up here. I'm going to darken it just a bit. Just a bit so we have more of an interesting sky. And actually, let's check the highlights because that can change our sky. Yeah, I'm going to bring the highlights down so that these clouds kind of pop out there. And this blue is kind of weird now. So I'm going to actually bring the blue Double click on blue, double click on purple. Yeah, I like that better. Leave the blue and bring the highlights down. And that's looking pretty good. And I'm going to check the vignette, but see what the vignette does in the corners? It does not look right. So we're going to leave the vignette off on this one. And uh, I kind of like that. I'm going to leave that the way it is right now. So I'm going to flag that one. And now I've got these. This Notice this tree is blurry. Yeah, I take blurry pictures too. Uh, so that one's going to get deleted. Got the X up in the corner. And then I've got these four, which I can run in comparison mode. And when I was shooting them, I knew that I was going to want this one because it starts in the lower right and goes to the upper left. Uh, more so than this one a little bit. I'm going to do this one. So we're going to... We're going to edit that one. And I'm going to do an automatic white balance. And I'm going to do automatic exposure. I'm going to check the whites. And then I'm going to check the blacks. And that just looks terrible. You know, the, 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 the blue and the green are are not really complimentary and the trunk is just kind of gray and it's not really jumping in there so what I still like this photo so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go with black and white and this I often do when the colors don't work and this is starting to look pretty good right away <clears throat> let's check the clarity if I can bring in a little clarity and what we want to do is we want to look at this trunk we want to bring in the trunk texture but not darken it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up, I'm going to 
Let's see, I'm going to bring up the shadows a little bit at the same time of bringing up the clarity. So you get the texture, but it doesn't darken so much on you. Check those shadows again. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And uh, for a black and white photo, that's about as good as we're going to do. Let's check. Uh, when you do black and white, you can change every color, the tone of every color in the photo um, yourself. So, for example, I can take the blue of the sky and I can change it as much as I want. And if I go down here to auto, it resets. So I'm, I'm going to look at that and say, do I want to change that blue any? And the answer is, yeah, I'm going to lighten it, actually, because I want less of a gradient from the top to the bottom. I'm going to lighten it a bit. You have to be real careful with it because you generate halos and all sorts of problems. And I'm going to look at this bush. Let's see if I want to lighten that any. It's a tough call. Tough call. Okay, when in doubt, they say when in doubt, don't. All right, so we're going to leave that. Um, so that looks pretty good. But I have an idea. And one thing we can do with your ideas is we can do what's called create a virtual copy. And what that does is it makes a copy of the previous photo that looks just the same. And then we can develop the virtual copy. And I want to show you something. I want to try this toad curve. We, we did this once before using this curve where you can change um, the output toads versus the input toads. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to darken this way up. And then I'm going to grab this upper corner and I'm going to bring it down. And notice what's happening. The whole sky is going to go white, and that's what I want. I want to bring that to the left until the whole sky goes white, pure white. And look what that does. It gives me a cool looking silhouette. So I don't want to have, I, I can make those trunks go black. That's something I can do. And, and that is interesting. That's interesting. But let's try this. I'm not going to go black. I'm going to leave the texture in the trunks. But darken them. So they're, they're as bad as dark as they can get, but the texture is all still there. So that's kind of cool. I like that. Uh, one more thing I'm going to try. I'm going to try adding some color. And what we have here is called split toning. You've got highlights and shadows. And you can add color to the highlights. But notice they don't add color to the white because the white is blown out. It has nothing you can add color to. So let's look at this. What color do we want to add? What would be kind of fun? How about red? And then the, then the shadows we can add color to as well. And usually what I'm doing red is I add a blue to the shadow. So we're going to then bring our sliders up. So now the shadows are coming in blue. The highlights red. We're just going to add a bit. We don't want to overwhelm the picture. There, that's kind of interesting. It kind of looks like a torch. All right, so here's our two pictures. Um, there's our, our extreme and our black and white. All right, let's move on. I got these three pictures. And I think the only one I like is this one because the legs of the shadow are vertical. So I'm going to develop that one. All right, starting at the top, we're going to start out with a little bit of a crop. I'm going to bring this bottom up so that this shadow is coming out of the corner. And I'm going to rotate this just a bit. There we go. That looks good. Okay, and then we do the white balance. You know what? I don't like that white balance. That turned everything gray. I think it's correct. 
but I like the yellow. I'm going to leave the yellow for now. Maybe automatic um, exposure, and I'm going to check my whites. Oh, look at the whites are blown. Look at that. We've got to bring those way down. Okay, good. The blacks, not much in the way of black problems. And then this bright, 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 bright wall I don't like. I'm going to bring the highlights down a bit. Okay, in fact, what about shadows? Maybe I bring those down, but no, you know what? Let's leave the shadows. Let's go here to the tone curve. I'm going to bring those shadows way down. How's that look? Now this one, I do not want to bring these whites up. I don't want to blow those whites out up there. I want to leave them there. In fact, I'm going to actually brighten them up just a hair. Um, I want the dark shadows, but I want... I'm going to bring those highlights back up because I want that wall to be white or light colored. So that's pretty good. Maybe a little too much. What do you think? What about clarity? Can we bring some clarity on there? No, that's too extreme. I'm going to soften that. But look what the clarity does to the wall. I like what the clarity is doing to the wall. I don't like what it's doing to the floor. So I'm going to make it, I'm going to soften the floor. And I'm going to show you something, what I'm going to do here. There we go. Okay, now we're going to take this brush. And you see those circles? Everywhere I brush, um, that's going to paint what I'm doing here. So if I turn the exposure all the way down and I paint, it paints blackness. Okay, we don't want to do that. So we're going to reset. But what I do want to do is I want to paint clarity. And just for starters, I turn it all the way up, and I'm going to paint clarity all over this wall because I want you to see the texture of the wall. And if I hit the O key, you can see because it'll it'll show where I painted with red, and it'll show you the spots that I missed. I turn the O off, and now I can adjust the clarity. And what I want to do is I want to bring those lines up so that I can see them. I'm going to bring them up to about there. That's kind of cool. All right. So we've got clarity in the upper half and no clarity in the lower half. And finally, I'm going to bring in a bit of an extreme vignette. Really dark in those corners because it gives it kind of an old-timey look. And even more importantly, I'm going to add grain to the picture. And let me show you what that does. I'm going to zoom in here close. Okay. Okay, here's the no grain. You get nice smooth shadows. But then I add grain and I get crunchy shadows, which is what I want. I want the whole thing crunchy. Now we take a quick look at the picture. I'm, I'm kind of happy with those shadows. Let's check the tone curve again. Do I want to bring those down darker? No, I don't think so. But I think the wall is too dark again. Bring it up a bit. Maybe a little less vignette. What do you think? All right, let's go with that for now. All right. Cool. That's kind of fun photograph. Um, you know what? I think I want to rotate it a little bit more. That's what's bothering me. I think it needs rotating a little more. And what I can do is I can hit L twice, and it shows me what the photograph's going to look like. And that is better. I'm going to bring this bottom up again. Yeah, that's better. I'm going to hit L again to get my screen back. All right, there we go. Yeah, that's better. All right. So look at these ones. These were kind of some weird artsy shots that I did. And didn't come out. Look what happened. Remember the thing about depth of field? How you have part of it... Um, 
part of it in focus and part of it out of focus. And by accident, I focused on the nearest area. Um, I just didn't think. And uh, what happened was the farthest area ended up blurred. And that's not what I wanted. What I should have done was focused right about where this pole is. And had I focused right where this pole is, then probably the whole thing would have been in focus. Um, but I definitely needed to mess around with it some more. So, you know, I'm just going to skip this one right now because I'm disappointed in it. Uh, okay, we've got these two guys, which are kind of cool. And we'll look at these. They're hard to see because they're really dark. So here's what we'll do. We'll go back to them. And we'll develop one and we'll really quickly just hit auto white balance and auto exposure. I'm going to do the same on the other one. Auto white balance, auto exposure. Okay, so now when we compare them, we can look at them and say, oh, okay, there we go. And really, is there any significant difference between those two? Yeah, this, this fence comes all the way in, stays above the bottom of the photo. Here it gets cut off. So we're going to do this one on the right. I want you to notice something. Because the photo was shot dark, look what's happened here. That is horrible noise. And that's because the photo was dark dark photos. Places that are dark in the photo can generate noise. I didn't tell you, but I'm shooting these with my phone, and the phone just does not handle noise very well, does not handle dark features very well. So I'm going to go in here to my detail area, and I'm going to increase the noise reduction quite dramatically. I actually have another program that does noise reduction even better which I really should be doing with this program because you can see I'm generating artifacts up here. Really generating bad artifacts. Yeah. Yo. Dinner's ready. Okay. All right, so we'll hold it at that for now. Okay, that was a yummy dinner. Let's get back to this thing. Uh, you can see I did a little work on this, and I pretty much decreased the artifacts, uh, increased the noise reduction quite a bit, raised the sharpening, and I used the sharpening mask. See, everywhere where it's white, it's going to sharpen, and everywhere where it's black, it's not going to sharpen. So that helps reduce the artifacts in the sky. So that's pretty good. We helped it out a bit. And what else do we want to do with this thing? Um, I want to try some extreme, extreme a little bit. I want to bring the clarity up and the vibrance. Whoa, that's too much vibrance. Okay, let's bring the vibrance down, actually. Kind of gray the picture out. And what, uh, what else do we want to do? I want to see what it looks like with a kind of extreme contrast. Yeah. Well, you know, see the sky's coming in and we're starting to get halo artifacts around the bottom of this tree here. And that's not cool. So what if we just go with a bright look? And then we'll bring some of the vibrance back in. Oh yeah, I don't know. How about if we went again with the black and white? Yeah, black and white looks better. Okay, and I'm going to pick up this blue, and I'm actually going to make this blue lighter. So that what happens is the trees stand out more. Let's see, we picked up some modeling up here. I don't know if that's going to work. Uh, let's see. Bring up some other colors. I don't know. That's tough. That's tough. Let's see. Yeah, it's kind of, ooh, kind of ugly. Ugly. 
<clears throat> yeah, I don't know if this picture is salvageable. You know, it's just an okay picture. Let's move on. Let's see what, okay, I've got these two pictures, and let's compare those, and which one do we like? Um, they're pretty much the same. This one's got a lower horizon line, so I'm going to pick that one. And we're going to develop this. First thing I'm going to do, of course, is, as usual, I'm going to crop it. And I'm actually not going to crop. All I'm going to do is level out that horizon over there on the left. Uh, let's see. Uh, that's about right. Okay. And then we're going to do the um, auto weight balance. And we're going to do an auto exposure. And that's not bad. We're kind of dark in the shadows, but I kind of want it that way. And I'm actually going to bring the highlights down because I want the sky to be more defined. And let's check clarity. Let's see. Oh, that looks kind of ugly. I'm actually going to go soft on clarity to the left. I'm going to check my blacks. Blacks are looking good. Check my whites. Of course, the sun is just going to go completely white. And I don't want that beach to blow out, though. See how, see how blown out that beach is? But that, uh, that's looking good. I'm going to turn up the vibrance a little. And I'm not going to bring in any vignette because I think that's going to darken the sky. I don't want the sky to be dark. So that's a, yeah, that's okay. It kind of gives you the mood. Um, what else could we do? Uh, let's bring up the temperature and make it warmer. There we go. That's a little too much, but that looks better. Now it kind of looks sunny and warm. Kind of like it did when I was down there. And I'm actually going to bring up the exposure just a bit. Bring up more mid-range. Actually, you know what? Let's not do that. Let's try the tone curve. Let's bring up the mid-range in the tone curve a little bit. And I'm going to bring down the highlights. Oh, that's ugly. Picture got really gray, didn't it? Uh, let's mess with it. Uh, that's not bad. Mess with the clarity a little, maybe. Bring bring back some of the distinctiveness. You know what else we can try? We can try some split toning. And yeah, let's see, we'll bring, what do we want the highlights to look like? I want the highlights to be yellow? Like that. And shadows to be blue. That's typically what I do, is I do blue shadows, yellow highlights. And let's try that. That really kind of is cool. Let's move, shift toward the highlights a little bit. A little more blue in the bottom. Yeah, it kind of gives it an old-timey look. And then I'm actually going to bring, I'm going to check, see if I use this switch here, I can turn the tone curve off and on. I'm actually going to turn it off. I think it looks better. <clears throat> All right, cool. What else do we have? Oh, we got this one. I, I was copping from uh, Delilah with her beautiful symmetry pictures, and I wanted to try one myself. So I took this uh, down this walkway, this handicap walkway, and I had an idea right off the bat. What I would want to do is um, I'm going to auto and then auto, and then I'm going to bring the clarity way up. So we get really distinct shadows, and then better than that, I'm going to bring this tone curve. Got to make those shadows super harsh. And the whites, I don't think I want to do anything with the whites. I just want the shadows to be super distinct. Okay, so see what I did? I took that curve, the bottom of that curve over, 
and it just really crushes the blacks. I could do it this way. I could just bring this down. And that's actually a better way to do it because it doesn't make the blacks, doesn't give you any solid blacks. You still have, you still retain texture in the darks. But um, if you do it this way, then see the background up there? The background up in the middle center goes to black. And that may not be what you want. If I bring this down, it doesn't quite go to black. It remain, retains its texture. So let's do that. And looking at this, I'm going to say this thing's a little bit rotated. So I'm going to rotate a little more. Um, is that right? Hard to tell. Yeah. That looks better. And then center that the back. See, that's the other thing about symmetry photos is you got to get, you simply have to get the photo centered and symmetric. It's hard to do in the camera. Sometimes, it, sometimes it's not easy to do. All right, cool. So that was that one. And then I have this series of four here, which I was trying to get uh, the story in this one as I was trying to show a La Jolla background with this kind of trashy foreground and the chains and everything. And I don't think it worked all that well. Um, now this one's a little better. Um, it's kind of like La Jolla behind the fence. So let's look at this one. Which of these two look better? This one's a little blurry on the Edco. I think it focused on the fence. This one, the Edco, is sharp, so I think it focused there. So that's the one we'll develop. We'll auto white balance. We'll auto focus. I mean, auto tone. You can see this. Edco sign, the building in the back, everything's kind of blown out. So I'm going to actually bring that down a ways. Bring the shadows up a little bit. Uh, okay. That looks good. And then I'm actually going to bring a little, a little bit of vignette on this one. And I'm going to bring in a little bit of, should I bring in clarity to light up the fence? No, I want the fence to be more subtle. So I'm actually going to bring the clarity back down so the fence is more subtle. Vibrance, bring, increase the colors a bit. And uh, yeah, it's not a great picture. It's okay. I'm actually going to make the um, vignette softer. So it's not quite as obvious. So there we go. How's that? Um, you know, it would be a better way to do this vignette would be to, let's do this. Let's cancel that vignette for now. And let's do a, a radial gradient. Remember, this is where I have my radius. And right now it's set on clarity. I want to change it to exposure. So there. You can see that it's doing a radius there. And what I want is I want to darken everything outside of there. So I've got it kind of extreme right now. Because I want to figure out where I want this thing to be. And how big I want it. So I'm making it bigger. And you can do this in, in Snapseed and all sorts of places. <clears throat> Once I've got it designed, then I come back up here and I actually set it. And what that does is it focuses your eye on the Edco sign and the building behind. And then beyond that, I'm going to bring in a little bit of vignette just to sharp darken the corners. And I'm actually gonna I'm actually gonna reharden that vignette so it's just the corners. There we go. No, oh, a primary vignette is the gradient. <coughs> Secondary vignette is just the corners. All right, so there's another one. 
Uh, I've got these shots. I had this baobab tree. I thought, no, oh, that's kind of cool. But they're upside down, sideways. I mean, we don't want them that way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back here and I'm going to turn these over. I'm going to turn these upright. And now I'm going to look at all of these and say, which one, if any of these, do I like? And actually the one I like is this one down here because it fills the whole frame and there's less sky. And I think that's what I wanted. So this one was really an exercise. This one was an exercise in contrast. So again, I'm going to auto white balance and auto exposure and it brought the sky in and uh, I want to I want to see the texture of everything see how that see how the spikes come out when I do the clarity here they're kind of there but then I bring the clarity up and the spikes just stick out the other thing that sticks out is this striping on the tree the tree gets kind of interesting and well, gonna, I want to try something. I want to try darkening the sky. I can do that by selecting luminance here and the selector. And then I go up and I click on the blue and I pull my mouse down. And you can see the blue gets dark. Um, what it did do is it kind of made my neat zebra stripes disappear. So I don't think I want to do that. What if I went the other way? What if I lightened it? Eh, that's okay. I'm going to try something though. Let's do this. Let's go to black and white. And then let's bring that. Let's lighten that up. So now we see the zebra striping. And I'm actually going to bring the clarity up higher. And uh, what happens if we do... What happens if we... Eh, that's kind of wild. I don't know if that's the mood I want out of that or not. But, um, yeah, let's go with it for now. You see what I did with the tone curve? I brought the highs down so that the sky goes to white and the blacks uh, in these bush areas go to a solid black. So really what we're left with is this texture study in the trunk. So that's an interesting idea. Now I'm going to show you something neat. Um, <clears throat> I can do something here called a virtual copy. and I right click and I say create virtual copy. And you can see now I have two of those and I can go back to developing and I can hit reset and I can go right back to the beginning on that picture if I want to try something else. And I'm not making a copy of the picture. All I'm doing is making a copy of the edits, which is really cool. And I can do that as many times as I want. Uh, so if I want to try different pictures and try different things in different pictures, I can do so, um, which is kind of cool. And so, for example, in this one, I'm going to try leaving it color and then I'm going to desaturate the sky a little bit. And I'm going to bring it up and then I'm going to bring this guy back down because I want all of that texture. <clears throat> there we go. Yeah. So now I have two of them. Same photo. Edited two different ways. Okay. So that's the neat thing about Lightroom. You can just do this all day long. All right. <laughs> so... <laughs> Hope you had fun with that. Um, I'm going to edit that down to make it a little bit shorter, but the idea is to show you what I do when I edit photos. Um, one of these days I will do likewise on the little screen so that you guys who have 
phones will be more comfortable with editing. I hope you've already downloaded Snapseed and are playing with it. You should. Editing is a very, 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 very important part of photography. It's half the battle. So have at it, guys. Take care.